What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. It is Monday. It is May 15th, and we are back bringing you a video breakdown of all of the pitching and some of the bats that we like on this slate. So welcome back, everyone, or welcome for the first time if you have not been here before. I am your host. Hopefully, you go come away from this video being a better DFS player. Uh, thinking outside of the box a little bit, getting some insight that maybe you didn't have in the last video or the prior day before finding us. So big shout out to everybody. All I mean, yesterday's video was huge. We did have, um, so like I said, any video that gets 50 likes, if you leave a comment, you have a random chance to be randomly chosen from random.org to win a free month of MLB DFS content. And wouldn't you know it, we had 50 likes on the dot and we had one person comment. Chops, who I look at this, they've been subscribed to me for four years, so persistence pays off. So Chops, if you are watching this, uh, contact me at advisors underscore team on Twitter and we will hit you up and we'll get you signed up for a free month. It's super easy. Didn't even have to use random.org. There was one comment. So we had... 50, let's just show you real quick. We had 465 views, one comment, 50 likes. Simple as that. So that's as easy as it is. All you got to do, be a subscriber, hit that like button. If any video gets 50 or more likes, all the comments we put in random.org, if there's more than one, and someone will be chosen. Or an easier way. Be a subscriber, hit that like button, and tell us who's going to hit home run and what inning. So had Chops gotten Aaron Judge in the first correct, he would have won two months because he got that one and the other one. So super simple. Uh, always having contests. Check it out. Anyone who does subscribe uh, in the month of May to FTA Plus, it's $10 a month, and you get a ton of information, a ton of content. Um, anyone who signs up in the month of May will be in the running for a season pass of MLB. So definitely check that out, fantasyteamadvisors.com. With that being said, we're just going to jump right into it. We're going to look at all the pitching. We're going to look at some of the bats on the slate. Some of these games aren't actually going to be on the slate, like the main slate, but we will go over them. So, again, if there are certain things that you're looking for to help be a better DFS player, help you find, you know, uh, an avenue to build better lineups or think outside the box. If there's something you would like to see in these videos, please let us know and we'll try to incorporate them into it. So always looking for suggestions. That's why we have a bunch of our tabs on the site because with that, it has grown so much in the seven years that we've been around. Um, I'll just kind of show you real quick. MLB tab. We have a ton of information here. You can check this out. Um, some is free, some is part of the FTA Plus, and you can go FTA Plus right here, fantasyteamadvisor.com. You can sign up for ten dollars a month, so definitely check that out, and we will helpful hopefully help you build better lineups. So that being said, we're jumping into this. We got David Peterson versus Patrick Corbin. We got the New York Mets versus the Washington Nationals. It's an early game. I'm not really sure why it's this early. Um. But it is. So we will still go over it. Uh, looking at this, David Peterson in 33 plate appearances against the Nats, 18.2K percentage, so not that high, 241 batting average against him. So if you are playing like an all-day slate, you can use these guys here. Um, I don't know how many people actually play the all-day slates. I guess we'll kind of find out when we get there. So looking at that, um, I might have some exposure to Peterson, but again, I'm not playing this slate, so it's kind of hard for me to even think about it. On the flip side of that, I mean, Patrick Corbin has seen the Mets so many times. 237 plate appearances, 20.3K percentage, but almost given up a 300 batting average. I just, Patrick Corbin, he only gave up two earned runs in his, I mean, he's been okay lately, which I'm, I'm very confused about. Um, his last start against the Giants, six innings, eight hits, three strikeouts, two earned runs, 25 fantasy points on FanDuel. Problem is, only three strikeouts. 
Time before that against the Cubs, two earned runs, six strikeouts, seven innings, three hits, quality start, 37 fantasy points. And then we go back to April versus Pittsburgh, 5.1 innings, seven hits, two strikeouts, three earned runs, and only 13 strikeouts. So he's been very inconsistent. Um, but he comes in here, a 1-5 in five record, 4.87 ERA, that screams Mets. Let's get the Mets. Let's... I want all of the Mets here. But then the Mets have not been that good. So looking at this game, I'm probably not. Well, I know for a fact I'm personally not playing these games. Um, if you are, I would be looking at the Mets bats, though. Uh, a 296 batting average and 237 played appearances. A lot. I mean, Pete Alonso at 45 played appearances, 13 for 37. Pete Alonso has five home runs against him, batting 351. i I'm all over Pete. Would be maybe my home run pick for today. Starlin Marte, 11 for 39 with two doubles and a home run, batting 282. Um, Eduardo Escobar, 5 for 9 with a double and two home runs, batting 263. Mark Canna has a home run and five hits. So I, I'm all over Pete Alonso here. Definitely over Alonso as my home one of my home run picks. So that's kind of my thought process there. Um, I think I'm going to start doing that. Part of the cheat sheet, we have um, the plays we like. We have the stacks we like. We have the core plays and lineups that we like. And I think we're going to start doing home run calls. Now, whether or not you want to use that for DFS or sports betting, um, we've been doing pretty good. So I think that's kind of where we'll go at on that one. Next game, Angels at the Orioles. Shohei Otani versus Grayson Rodriguez. Otani, uh, only 16 plate appearances. And he's got, uh, you know, 500 batting average, so eight hits. So about one total start, 25K percentage. Um, he's only pitched, this will be his sixth game of the year. Uh, coming off a pretty good game against Houston, he had 37 fantasy points. Uh, seven strikeouts, but three earned runs. Against St. Louis, before that, he had 13 strikeouts, 42 fantasy points. Against Oakland, he gave up five earned runs, but had eight strikeouts. So he's getting the strikeouts. I know Cincinnati, or uh, Baltimore, they're not... The A's, they're not the the Baltimore team of the past, but I, I do love Otani here. Um, he will be part of the all-day slate because he won't be part of the main slate, so that is definitely something to pay attention to. But I'm all over Otani here. I'm not looking at Grayson. I might look at Grayson for GPP, but he's been hit hard this season, so it's really hard to want to even consider him in cash. I would look at Rodriguez in GPP, though. Then the Yankees at the Blue Jays. Uh, as of right now, we don't know who the Yankees pitcher is, which is kind of crazy because it's the, you know, it's not, there's, I, I can't remember who would be in the order for this. Um, but then you've got the net against Alec Manoa. So Manoa did pitch against the Yankees. Let's see. Back on April 22nd, went seven innings, five strikeouts, no earned runs, got a quality start, only gave up two hits, got 40 fantasy points there. He's had success against him. He's coming off a really bad start against Philly. 4.2 innings, three earned runs, only one strikeout, eight fantasy points. Time before that, Boston, five innings, eight hits, three strikeouts, two earned runs. So his strikeouts have been down. Um, the Yankees actually split a four-game series with Tampa Bay, coming back in two games, almost came back on Sunday's game. Um, so their bats are coming alive when they need to. So looking at that, this is in Toronto. So they're on the road. Depending on what lineup comes out of there, um, I would not hate a Yankee stack against Manoa because I think it'll be under-owned just because of how he's had success in the past. So looking at that, 105 plate appearances, almost a 27% strikeout rate, 155 batting average. So looking at this, Judge is 1 for 19. That one hit is a home run if you want to use it that way. His bat's been coming along lately. Rizzo's absolutely on fire right now, 4 for 15 against him. Um, but he, yeah, like I said, he's on fire. DJ's bats coming alive. He's only two for 11, though. So a lot of these numbers don't look good, but their bats are coming alive. Oswaldo Cabrera had a two-run home run on Sunday. Uh, Anthony Volpe um, had a, I think it was a two-home run, two-run home run on Sunday, too. So, I mean, all of these bats are coming alive. I think a sneaky stack would be the Yankees. Don't know about cash. I would look in GBP, though. But I'd be looking at a Judge, a Rizzo, uh, Volpe, uh, LeMay Hugh just depends on uh, Oswaldo Cabrera. It really depends on what lineup comes out there. And, and we don't know who's pitching for the Yankees. So kind of 
Kind of curious about that. Mariners at the Red Sox is next. George Kirby versus Tanner Houck. Kirby, 16 plate appearances, 286 batting average. Only 12.5K percentage, though. That, that kind of stinks. He is the fifth highest priced pitcher on the slate, though, on FanDuel at 10,000. And then Tanner Houck, 24 plate appearances, 182 batting average. We were able to see what uh, Miles Mikolas was able to do to the Red Sox on Sunday Night Baseball. I think George Kirby could do that as well. Um, Kirby has not faced Boston this year um, and hasn't really faced him much, but a little concerned because it is Fenway. We know a lot of runs come out of there. Hopefully the runs are for uh, Seattle and not for Boston because I will have exposure to uh, Kirby in this one. And then just looking, I mean, I probably won't have any of the bats. Again, once the batter trends come out, I will look at that, but I'm looking at Kirby here. And then the Brewers at the Cardinals is next. Freddie Peralta versus Jack Flaherty. Peralta, 123 plate appearances, 274 batting average, uh, 24.4K percentage. He is the second highest uh, priced pitcher on the slate behind Otani at 10,900 on FanDuel. Um, see, has he, fa- he faced St. Saint- Louis on April 9th. Six innings, seven strikeouts, one earned run, got the W, had a quality start, 46 fantasy points. Cardinals are playing better baseball now than they were. Um, flip side of that. Flaherty, 102 plate appearances, 271 batting average, 19.6. I will take a flyer on both of these pitchers. Not sure about cash or GPP at the moment, but I will have exposure to both of these. I will also have exposure to some of the bats. So if you are looking at some of the bats against Peralta that have had success, Goldie, 7 for 19 with three doubles and two home runs, three set, 368. Wilson Contreras, 4 for 17 with a double and a home run. Arenado, who I believe homer Friday, Saturday, Sunday, could be in store for a fourth game in a row of homering. Uh, 7 for 19, three home runs there. Edmund, 3 for 17. DeYoung had a home run, I believe, today, or on Sunday. Uh, one home run against him as well. And then Alec Burleson, don't think he'll start. Uh, one for two with a double there. On the flip side of that, the Brewers bats against Flaherty that have had success since they got, they've got they faced each other in the same division for a while. Yelich, 9 for 31, one double, two home runs, batting 290. Jesse Winker, 7 for 18 with three doubles and two home runs. Don't mind him. Willie Adamas, two, 3 for 7, two of those three hits are home runs. Rowdy Telez, only 1 for 3. That's basically it. So if I'm looking at bats here, I'd go Winker, Yelich, um, probably Willie Adamas, maybe Rowdy Telez as well. Next game, Braves at the Rangers. You got Charlie Morton versus to be announced. Charlie Morton, 49 plate appearances, 279 batting average, 16.3K percentage. Any Rangers bats that jump? I, I'll have some exposure to Morton. Probably more GBP. Wouldn't, wouldn't trust him in cash. And then looking at this, Marcus Simeon, 7 for 20 with two doubles. That's 350 batting average. Robbie Grossman, 3 for 9 with a double that's 333 so not much so the numbers are a little bit higher just because you know 333 350 and the rest nothing um so looking at that maybe a little bit more uh, exposure to morton um if we're not using simeon or rangers bats cubs at the astros jameson tyon versus fran Valdez. Valdez is the third highest pitcher on the slate um 17 plate appearances against cubs hasn't given up a hit at home uh, 35.3k percentage i'm all over fran rivaldez cash gbp i don't care cubs just got absolutely embarrassed against uh the twins in minnesota and now they're still on the road and then tie on 60 plate appearances 333 batting average against him a lot of those numbers coming from when he was on the yankees um so looking at this martin maldonado five for 12 with two doubles and a home run bregman two for eight with a home run Jordan, two for seven with a home run. Kyle Tucker, three for seven with a home run. So, yeah, I'm all over an Astro stack here. Um, calling it, Jordan probably hits a home run today. Wouldn't be surprised. Not on Tyone at all. Looking at Astros as a stack and Valdez as a pitcher. Probably my second favorite pitcher. Might be my number one over Otani, and the price is a little bit better. So, and he's third. Yeah, he's even priced less than Peralta against the Cardinals. You got the Reds at the Rockies. I'm not going to be having exposure to this because it is in Coors. Hunter Green, 17 plate appearances, 357. Obviously not much. Uh, Connor Siebold, 11 plate appearances, 500 batting average. So looking at Hunter Green here. 
Reynold Grichuk, one for three. Diaz, one for two. So obviously that's 333, 500, 333, 333. So looking at that, I mean, the numbers off the rip look bad. Actually, you know what? I might have exposure to Hunter Green here. Now, I think it'll be very low owned because it is in Coors. And we know Hunter Green has a very sh high strikeout upside, but he can also get lit up just as well. If his stuff is off at all, especially in Coors, could get lit up. I'm trying to see if he's faced Colorado this year. He has not. He's gone six innings twice all year. Um, this, yeah, the strikeouts are very up and down. Against the Mets, his last start, four strikeouts. Against the White Sox, the start before that, seven strikeouts. Against Oakland, ten strikeouts. That's not saying much. It's Oakland. So I'll have some exposure to Hunter Green here. It'll be GPP, obviously, um, because it is in Coors and, you know, anything can happen there. And then any since, I mean, 11 plate appearances for Seabolt, so not much. Yeah, like Jonathan India is two for three. I might take a shot on him. Friedel, I believe, is on the IL, so he's out. So there's not a lot to like here. Um, I'll have some exposure to Green, but then I'll just kind of look at the bats with batter trends and see if anyone sticks out to me. Diamondbacks at the Athletics is here. Merrill Kelly versus Drew Rachinsky. I thought Rachinsky was pitching on Sunday. What happened? I don't know what happened. I'm not really sure. Um, he has only made three starts all year. Uh, none of them have been good. So I'm looking at the Diamondbacks bats here. Uh, I know it's in Oakland, but I, I love a Corbin Carroll, Cattell Marte. I love Rojas if he's uh, pitching or if he's hitting. Rojas out of the leadoff spot would be a, would be a dream for me here. Flip side of that, Merrill Kelly, 14 plate appearances, 286 batting average, 42.9K percentage. I am all over Merrill Kelly in Oakland against the Athletics. Would not be surprised if he goes for eight-plus strikeouts here. Um, and then I would be looking at a Diamondback stack just depending on who's out there um, and – the, the lineup that comes out and this is a later game so the lineup will come out a little bit later in the day it's the only downside here then we got the royals at the padres you got brad keller versus michael Walker. keller 67 plate appearances 268 batting average 17.9 k percentage versus michael Walker. uh 56 plate appearances 294 batting average 16.1 k percentage so these numbers um not the best not the best so the Padres bats against Brad Keller that have had success. Let's see. Matt Carpenter, 2 for 11 with a double. Probably not in there. Um, kind of just wait and see. Nelson Cruz is only 1 for 12. Bogarts is 3 for 11 with a with a double. Adam Engel is 3 for 10 with a double. I didn't even know Adam Engel was still playing. Rugi four for eight with a double and a home run. So I mean, there's not been a ton of success, but uh, yeah, I mean Brad Keller, not a good, not like a household name. A good start against the White Sox got the W his last start. The start before that, he faced the Athletics. Four point one innings, gave up eleven hits with only one strikeout, six earned runs, had minus two fantasy points there. Yeah, probably gonna look at who comes out in this uh, matchup and what lineup comes out for San Diego, but I wouldn't be opposed of going like a Soto, Cronenworth, Kim. Um, it depends on who's out there. Carpenter, if he starts, uh, will really depend on the lineup that comes out of there. But I won't have any, and, and I guess we, we can look at the, I mean, the number's kind of high. I'm expecting it to be a couple players out of the Royals. I mean, Matt Duffy, 3 for 13 with a double. Perez is 5 for 16 with a home run. Hunter Dozier's two for five with a home run. Yeah, I'm I'm still looking at uh, Waka here against Kansas City, and then probably looking at like a can uh, San Diego stack over that. Then we got the Phillies at the Giants. Got Bailey Falter versus Alex Wood. Uh, Falter six plate appearances, nothing there. Hasn't seen him. I won't have exposure to him. Um, it is in San Francisco, so it's a pitcher's park. But then you got Alex Wood against the Phillies. Uh, I'm assuming most of these numbers are coming from when Alex Wood was with the uh, Dodgers, but who knows? 100 plate appearances, 13% strikeout rate, and a 341 batting average. So looking at that, Bryce Harper's 9 for 24 with four doubles, batting 375. I'm all over Harper here. 
Josh Harrison's 8 for 24 with two doubles and a home run. Trey Turner, 6 for 19 with a double and two home runs. Castellanos, 2 for 2 with a home run. So, yeah, definitely looking at a stack here. Uh, a Harper, if Harrison's in there, I like him. Turner, Castellanos, possibly Kyle Schwarber. just depends on what lineup comes out for the Phillies. And then the final game, you got the Twins at the Dodgers. You got Pablo Lopez versus Noah Syndergaard now. Lopez, 74 plate appearance, 324 batting average, 20.3K percentage. I like that a little bit. I'm going to stack against Pablo Lopez here. The problem here is Noah Syndergaard left his start how early into the last game? I believe it was like the fifth inning? No. Uh, Syndergaard against Milwaukee, his last start, one inning. Gave up one hit, one walk, and had to leave because of a cut on his finger. Didn't go in the IL. Was a possibility. Uh, he's so far been cleared. I have heard rumblings that Syndergaard might not start this game. So this is something to pay attention to. Um, I wouldn't use Syndergaard anyway just because if he is, he's got a cut on his finger. If it opens up, he's out. I've heard he might get skipped, and it's a AAA player. But, again, I guess Clayton Kershaw's mom passed away the day before Mother's Day. Um, and he's supposedly going to start on Tuesday. So the AAA guy or the minor league guy who got scratched might be taking his spot or Syndergaard. So this is definitely a weird one. And especially at the end of the day, um, the very last game, we'll, we'll wait for news to come out later on in the day to see. I would not trust Syndergaard at all. I and mean, then it might jump into a, if he doesn't start, it would be a bullpen or a, uh, a guy making his debut, and if he does start and gets hurt, it's a bullpen game, so it's really hard to tell. But the Dodgers bats against the Twins that I like in this one. Freeman's 11 for 33 with four doubles. That's 333 batting average. Max Muncy's been on fire this season. He's getting those fantasy points, even though his batting average is not good. David Peralta's 3 for 7 with a home run. Mookie Betts is 2 for 6 with a double. Will Smith, two for five with a home run. So I will be looking at some of these bats here, just depending on what order they come in, but definitely looking at a Mookie, Freeman, Muncy. Um, and then if we're looking for a cheaper option, just depends on who's in the outfield for the Dodgers in this one. So not looking at Syndergaard at all because he might not start, and if he does, he might leave early, and then you'll get screwed out of the points, especially on FanDuel where you can only have one pitcher. So there you go. There is the uh, breakdown of all of the pitchers and the bats on the slate. If you want to check out more, go to fantasyteamadvisors.com. We have BVP on the site. We have stolen bases on the site. We have batter trends for both FanDuel and DraftKings, which is part of the premium content, which is only $10 a month, which is probably the best you're going to find out there. Um, big shout out to everyone who subscribed to this YouTube page in the past. Well, it blew up overnight. We had like 50 new subs last night, which was awesome. Uh, continue to grow that trying to um really trying to get to 10,000 YouTube subscribers and 10,000 Twitter followers by the All-Star break. So if we can get that that would be awesome. If we can get that one of those 10,000 on Twitter or 10,000 subs on YouTube by the All-Star break, one sub on YouTube or Twitter will be chosen for a lifetime pass to fantasyteamadvisors.com. So I know we can do it. We're almost there. Uh, getting closer, inching there every single day. We got about two months, about 60 days until the All Star game. So I think we can do it the way we've been going. Um, it, so just share these videos, share it to your Twitter, share it to your Facebook, uh, tell your mom, tell your grandma, tell tell them Happy uh, Mother's Day yet on Sunday, and uh, and then sub to this uh, YouTube page. So that's what I've got for you guys. Good luck on this slate. Let's bring them some bacon. Peace.